Hello and welcome to nepaltraveler.com. We are back once again with our weekly episodes of Travel Trade Talk. Every Wednesday we premiere a new show and today we are talking to a very special person, a person who's proved himself time and again, a person whom the whole tourism industry looks up to to lead us in this situation. We are at the Nepal Tourism Board and we're talking to the CEO, Mr. Deepak Raj Joshi. Welcome to our show, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, Deepak ji, to start with, mm -hmm. congratulations on your second appointment as the CEO of uh, Nepal Tourism Board for the second time. Thank you. Uh, maybe we can start with mm -hmm. how you actually started your journey in mm -hmm. tourism and then we'll cover other areas. Okay. <laughs> uh, I think back in 2000, uh, September, we were passing through uh, this, this exhibition road towards uh, new road. And there was a notice about, you know, the uh, officers, uh, the vacancy announcement from Nepal Tourism Board. And then we used to study at uh, Sankardev uh, MBA. Uh, our final year exam was going on. Uh, suddenly out of, you know, the 16 or 18 friends, we were walking together towards uh, New Road. And then we saw that notice and we, out of that 16 uh, group of my friends, we eight, we, we applied and out of eight, we, we three got selected. And since then, always in tourism, I never looked after you know the other sectors to join in. I never uh, thought to apply for the, like you know the, 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 the pure bureaucratic uh, uh, postings like uh, public service commission or something like that. Never thought to go abroad, and maybe it was a, a, a very very big passion since then. Uh, since then, I'm always in tourism. And you. You're probably a story of someone who's worked and come right from the ranks. You know Tourism Board because right from the inception you were there. What were the early days like working at Tourism Board? The early days was, uh, though, though uh, the day Tourism Board started its operation, since then uh, we are going through a different kind of crisis. Sometimes uh, Royal Master Circle, sometimes Maoist Insurgency, sometimes uh, the, the unstable politics every day, you know, the closure of different parts of Nepal. And then uh, <clears throat> earthquake, after that, a kind of uh, difficulties in managing supply chains, COVID. So in every three to four or five years of time, we're going through different kind of crisis. Uh, despite that, despite that, Tourism Board uh, is being able to position itself as a national tourism organization, both inside the country and uh, outside of Nepal as well. As well. Uh, in in uh, earlier days, it was, uh, you know, the, the, the tourism board itself, it was established with a very pure intention to have public-private partnerships, giving the private sector a leadership role. Out of 11 member, members in the board, uh, we can say six are from private, private sector, sector, including CEO. Uh, so principally it was there, and then it was working quite well. Our co close collaboration used to be with, uh, more with private sector, uh, but slowly, uh, slowly, it is uh, 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 engaging with uh, so many other stakeholders as well, more with you know the local municipalities, provincial governments, other uh, NGOs type of things. So maybe this is the time we have to uh, uh, clear Refocus. our actions. You know the what are the, our core areas to uh, engage in. And you've come right from the ranks, so. Although Nepal has been through various challenges, upheavals every few years, but you've been right there at, at the core of it. So perhaps uh, your experience is something that the tourism board at this moment needs. What do you see as the biggest challenges today now that you've come as a second time as, as the CEO? Right now, uh, uh, I think there are key four or five actions we need to uh, coordinate for. There are a few roles that Nepal Tourism Board as a public-private partnership office should, should coordinate with the key uh, stakeholders, both in private sector and the nice. public sector. Second is to position Nepal differently, we have to take a lead. Uh, so in these two uh, areas we will focus on, uh, especially talking about like, you know, the, the biggest challenge at the moment of uh, Nepal to position as a destination is, the one is uh, access to the destination is very, very difficult. Uh, the, the airlines cost is uh, very expensive. Uh, our destination is uh, very much season based. 
uh, and then the, uh, de uh, the infrastructure connecting with the major destinations by road is also not uh, so good. So, so within these kind of you know the unfavorable situations, uh, we have to uh, uh, we ha we have to synergize our efforts. So within limitation, within the limitation, how we can perform better? Uh, my focus will be there. Uh, for example, uh, we are the country where we still we don't have uh, e visa uh, system. So maybe I'm thinking to coordinate uh, with the government agency or Department of Immigration for this. Because uh, uh, everything has become so easy these days, uh, booking of hotels, booking of air, air tickets, booking of transport, it is, we can make it just in a click. But access to the destination is uh, still uh, difficult, especially for Nepal, uh, for the countries like Nepal. So, so uh, e-visa will certainly ease the travelers, uh, these kind of things. And second is, um, we have already built two new international airports. But uh, they are not uh, operating successfully, uh, <coughs> and and our role, uh, indirect role, I mean a coordinatory role, will be uh, to market these airports. Right. The Nepal government has come up with uh, an incentive package for two to three years, uh, so we have to market and then promote that message also. Uh, and uh, uh, third is uh, in supply side. We have a, a huge challenge of uh, managing uh, quality human resources, retaining them and then uh, building them for immediate future. So that is also another key areas uh, uh, we want to collaborate for with uh, the relevant stakeholders. And in other side, uh, <coughs> uh, basically when we talk about talk with our friends in source markets, uh, uh, there is still a very strong and rigid perception among the travelers is Nepal is the only mountainous country. And uh, Nepal is only fit for the adventure loving uh, enthusiasts. Whereas Nepal has so rich, uh, uh, you know, the experiences and offers. And that's why we'll be trying to position Nepal as a lifetime experiences where uh, our wildlife, our spiritual, spiritual uh, activities, yes, yes. our hedges, festivals, food, this kind of uh, 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 product curation side also will uh, engage ourselves and we'll promote using uh, so many different uh, tools. On your recent appointment, uh, I've been talking to the other travel trade associations. There is a very high optimism at the moment, especially since Nepal Tourism Board was perhaps uh, dogged down by some issues for the last few months. So the, all the travel associations are very upbeat. Mm -hmm. uh, they feel that it will be easy now that a person like you is there. What kind of dialogues are you having with the other travel trade associations and how do you want to bring them all on board and move forward? Uh, you are right, uh, you are very right. I think uh, that is the biggest pressure I am uh, feeling at the moment because I was going through my, you know, the, the media comments, uh, 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 I mean the comments from different stakeholders in my social media postings uh, like that. So there are uh, nearly 9,000 plus uh, different comments and all are very positive and hopeful and exactly. type of comment. And that is the biggest uh, challenge. It's a huge expectation uh, with uh, among industry. industry friends and that's the biggest challenge. And I think that challenge I will take as, a, as my motivation and we'll work uh, together. And collaboration is my mantra. So in my earlier tenure also, yes. I always, because uh, with you know the tourism cannot be developed and uh, we can we cannot position in isolation exactly. so we we must collaborate and especially with the private sector both uh, within the country and the private sector outside of the country for example in major source market also there are so many travel trade organizations international organizations like pata unwto ata yes. wttc so, so we will collaborate both uh, outside of the country and inside of the country and then we'll try to synergize uh, everybody's effort uh, for the better uh, and brighter days of Nepalese tourism. Uh, so with the season here already, I mean, what we call a seasonal tourism, uh, the autumn season is the high season for Nepal. What are your expectations, mm -hmm. especially right now, this season? Mm -hmm. uh, the industry is quite hopeful. Uh, the bookings are and the, uh, the <coughs> inquiries are very, very good. Uh, but uh, because of uh, our, you know, the uh, air safety issue and the road safety issue, uh, which happened a few months back, uh, we have to uh, communicate uh, with our industry that Nepal is uh, ready. Uh, Nepal is safer now uh, <coughs> because uh, after that, government has uh, 
taken very very stringent uh, measures uh, monitoring and this kind of uh, uh, things and uh, uh, from the you know the regulatory and monitoring authorities also have become so serious we can see in their behavior and then their uh, actions as well every uh, SOPs are being uh, no, monitored please. well uh, and this message we had to uh, communicate to the uh, right players uh, of our industry and that also will do I think uh, this upcoming season is uh, very encouraging looking at the inquiries and then the bookings uh, uh, that we, our industry is receiving and after this season also we are trying to make uh, different uh, we, we, we're try, we are curating different messages for different seasons uh, so that you know the low season also can be uh, used. Uh, used and then our infra uh, despite you know the kind of um, uh, infrastructure limitation we can uh, increase the number uh, the number that is spent more so the two big markets that are actually our neighbors what kind of plans would you have for let's say india and china because mm -hmm. if we get even just a part of mm -hmm. their travelers mm -hmm. it'll make a big difference yeah. Uh, one thing uh, what uh, I'm looking at is in these two markets, we have to maintain the traditional segments, which is, for example, talking about India, a kind of pilgrimage, corporate, VFR. And besides that, we have to uh, connect with new segments, which is still in, the, uh, in India, there are like adventure loving people, like weekend breakers, uh, like spiritual segments, uh, the people who are looking for. So that kind of new segments also n we need to reach out. Uh, 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 I, I think last year uh, or before last year it was nearly 25 million outbound uh, from, from India, India. Yes. and it is uh, a huge market. The China is the largest outbound market uh, in the world. We must focus in these two markets but looking at uh, the new segments, maintaining the world segments. Also sir, uh, in terms of you talked about the two airports, mm -hmm. uh, both these airports again uh, really don't have international flights mm -hmm. coming in. So, what would be the one, two, three points that you'd like to tell the international market or to get more uh, aviation companies to come in, international aviation? So, uh, in this line, we, we want to help our government uh, by sharing some insights. For example, countries like Maldives, countries like <coughs> even a few other destinations, they have a very good scheme, of, uh, uh, scheme for charter flights. Uh, maybe these two airports we can uh, yes. give a few special offer to the charter, uh, to the uh, you know the airlines operators. We can come uh, in charter flights. Even the big two companies, <coughs> they do bring uh, charter flights. For example, in our uh, Nepal, also early in early days, like early. Martin Air, Transvia, Arki flights. Exactly. You know, Arki flights was like that kind of uh, flights was there. So one thing is this. Second is uh, connecting with uh, the big tour operators. Connecting with uh, the air, air airlines, and third is uh, especially for the uh, for the airport like Lumbini, maybe the big uh, Buddhist gurus uh, whose uh, followers are uh, in a big number. Maybe we can uh, have a special programs combining with uh, these kind of uh, gurus and connecting with the airlines. So in this way, uh, uh, we can certainly <coughs> uh, <coughs> uh, help government to to. Uh, successfully airports. operate these uh, airports without successfully uh, operating these two airports we cannot increase uh, numbers significantly True. also sir, uh, as a last question perhaps now that you're back at the tourism board how do you see things have changed here because mm -hmm. in your last tenure mm -hmm. there was different kinds of challenges mm -hmm. even internally mm -hmm. there was and perhaps uh, in the few last few months there has been a certain amount of lethargy, there has been a certain mm -hmm. amount of criticism mm -hmm. and things have gone mm -hmm. slow at the tourism board. Mm -hmm. How do you face these things? Uh, I think uh, it's so sad to uh, notice that uh, past uh, few years, tourism board could not uh, organize uh, international promotion programs, could not do uh, you know, the, a kind of new messaging, branding, communication type of things. Uh, so that uh, I want to uh, revive back as soon as possible. Uh, within uh, two weeks of my time, we have already confirmed our participation in WTM, which was yes, uh, stopped last year. And WTM and ITV are the biggest. And you'll be leading. Uh, Nepal uh, Tourism Board will uh, take the lead. Yes. So nearly 35 uh, private companies will be participating uh, in that platform. Uh, <coughs> uh, similarly, uh, the team is the morale of the team is uh, very down. Uh, we have to motivate them. 
the team inside Nepal Tourism Board is a pool of very talented people, but we need to uh, motivate and mobilize. And that will be my uh, prime uh, focus. Uh, and in few, uh, the rules and regulations also need to be uh, fixed, adjusted and improved. Uh, uh, I think that is also uh, one of the, my priority. Uh, <coughs> and uh, working with the uh, team spirit always brings better results. Uh, so that will be my uh, another mantra uh, to work with the industry, to, to work within the uh, official Tourism. staff. And uh, third thing I want to focus myself is even the inside uh, the operation modality, we want to make it uh, a digital uh, kind of service uh, uh, providing capability, enhancing digital service uh, providing capability. Yes. Do you see that digitally perhaps Nepal is still lacking as a destination yes. and promotion? Yes. Because that's a common I, thing that people that, say. That is my another top uh, area of uh, priority, uh, both inside the destination to enhance our capability to be uh, able to reap the benefit of the uh, digital movement that's going on. And another side uh, to connecting with the segments and destinations as a consumer publicity, that also will be our top priority. Uh, in a way, I can say uh, in, in three segments. One, the inside the staff systems, making uh, digitally more capable. Third, uh, encouraging industry and then inspiring them and helping them for the capacity building uh, 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 from the perspective of digital uh, enhancement and third is the research, reaching out to the consumers through digital uh, platforms. So this is also one of our uh, top priority. Thank you so much Deepakji for taking the time and we wish you all the best and we hope that the entire industry, the government bodies will support you so that tourism can go ahead. Thank, thank you. you. Thank so you much, very sir. much. Challenges are there but we will overcome together.